Well, I'm interested in your interest in people. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you spend all your life working with people's souls. Yeah. So did I. But you're here in, in Bohemia and in Central Europe. And I'm still arriving here. Spiritually, I come from here. So I was all my way on, on my life. I feel I was on my way here. But I don't feel I arrived completely. Mm -hmm. I spent many years in other countries. But I think my orientation is Central European. Uh, my parents Slavonic and all the generation uh, of my parents Slavonic in Israel. Aha, I was born in Israel. But um, Central Europe is my passion. So I'm looking for Central Europe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought a man like you dedicating your life for soul work in Central Europe of deep interest to me because it is deeply my orientation but not fully my information. Mm -hmm. I'm still a student mm -hmm. of it, but I study through making a contribution. And I'm very interested in your perspective of the situation now mm -hmm. with Western Slavonic Central Europe, which for me is the future of humanity. So <coughs> that I have no doubt. How and what happened now and where to make a contribution, I'm exploring it in action. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, not many Central European have perspective on Central Europe, but I think you do. So I'm very interested in your insight. And also, maybe you can have perspective on what I do, and maybe you can help me to put it in context. Mm -hmm. Because I brought my context with me. I came to Slovakia 10 years ago, but I want to put my context in context, to be more relevant for the spirit of these people. So, that can be a starting point. Když jste o tom mluvil, tak jsem si vzpomněl na sen, který jsem měl asi před půl rokem, kdy jsem mluvil k lidem, bylo jich tam desítky, spíš stovky, a mluvili jsme právě o orientaci. A já jsem říkal, jo, a všichni mluvili, kam se přikloníme? Na západ, nebo na východ, nebo sever, nebo jich. A já jsem říkal, co pak srdce se někam přiklání? Srdce je centrum, srdce je těžiště, srdce je nezávislý a nezaujatý. Srdce tvoří těžiště, nemůže se někam přiklánět. Ale, ale zvláštní věc byla v tom snu, že Kdybych to měl odhadnout, tak k tomu rozumělo asi 15 lidí. Ale mně se to vlastně zdálo dobrý, že aspoň někdo. Takže já si myslím, že, že když člověk žije tady, v, té, v tomhle mm. prostoru, takže hledá něco, čemu se říká vědomí sebe sama. A tam my jsme tady učení to vědomí sebe sama odvozovat z nějakého výkonu nebo ze vztahů, který máme s okolím a zapomínáme na to stát se tím těžištěm, zůstat tím těžištěm, zůstat vlastně v té v v nezaujatosti. A ještě bych chtěl samozřejmě zdůraznit, to určitě tomu Jehoda rozumí, mm. že to není o egu, ale o té bytostné podstatě. The word ego can be confusing. In Greek, ego means yeah. And a hundred years ago it had no negative connotation. I did some research, I spoke to some yogis, what is this negative ego? And one answer was from yogi in Budapest. He said, it's a misunderstanding. The negative connotation of I misunderstanding. The commercial branch of Buddhism. <laughs> That made sense to me. But the Ja, das Ich, I, This was born in Central Europe. It's a revolution that only started. Mm -hmm. But I'm a historian and hobby historian. Uh -huh. I'm a psychotherapist, but I'm a hobby historian. And I think I found the point when Ja was born. Mm -hmm. And it was born here in Central Europe. And 
these two branches of European cultural philosophy, mm -hmm. many variations, but basically two. I is product mm. or I is source. Aha, aha, aha. And it seems to me that you belong to I as source. For many people, I is product. Genetic, education, culture, role models, yeah. all the predictable stuff. But for the central philosophy of Central Europe, I is a source. And it disappeared. I want my Central Europe back. <laughs> Yes, it's a very good dream, fantastic dream. I work for it. I work for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know outcome, but I work for it. <laughs> yeah. You say that people don't ask themselves. And I say, the self, if it is origin, limitless. Yes, yes. But it, this is uh, like something like uh, na na naturally. Uh, self is, I think, new, literally, was not always like that. Uh -huh. yes. I think in terms of evolution, evolution of consciousness. Evolution of consciousness. Yeah, uh -huh. very central to my understanding is that we are in evolution. <clears throat> and there is direction, like a child. Mm -hmm. Baby, child, adolescent, yeah. adult. Humanity is Chilodiak, big Chilodiak. And so that's evolution. And we are not quite adults yet, but we started to be adults 200 years ago. So we don't begin it. It's, we cannot go back. To asi ne, no. Ono není moc kam se vracet. Only forward, yeah. But nothing to follow. And I don't know a lot about you, Pierre, because I don't read Slovak, a Czech, and so I didn't have a lot of opportunity to translate and to uh, go deeper into your philosophy yet. But I'm interested because you created it here, and I feel I feel I know something about you, and I think I know that you believe in the spirit of the individual. Yes, I don't. Yeah, that's very powerful and quite specific. And I don't know if we have the same cosmology, but we probably have the same psychology. Because <laughs> all my work is based on trust in the potential of the spirit of the individual, not just the psychological complex of the individual, but the spirit of the individual. And for me, that's the spirit of Central Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was destroyed in so many ways. To je pravda, no? And I want to make a contribution for the recovery. Já jsem jednou viděl, možná by tě to zajímalo, mapu, mapu uh, Euroázie a ona byla plastická. A byl tam takový, jak jsou Karpaty. Tak to vypadalo, že to je drak, že to je tělo draka. A hlava toho draka je Českomorovská kotlina. A možná, že to je vlastně ta, ta otázka, protože tady se rodí, když se rodí lidi sem, tak oni už musí být hodně, hodně individualizovaní. Já vždycky říkám, když si vybírají, když si vybírají lidi ty duše, když si vybírají to místo, kde se mají narodit, a je tam ten úředník, a on řekne, ta duše řekne, já se chci narodit do Čech. Tak oni řeknou, řekni ř. <laughs> a to je moc těžký. Vy, vyžaduje, to, vyžaduje to něco um, mentálního, něco duchovně mentálního. Duch, je to duchovní, je to i duševní. A je to, to nějaký druh artikulace. A já jsem přesvědčen, že artikulace patří právě k duchovní nějaký vyzrálosti. Ale je moc zajímavý, že když se ten člověk narodí sem, tak se dostane pod takový tlak a ten mu říká, neznamenáš nic, patříš, k, k, jako tady se říká malý národ, ale vůbec se nemluví o tom, buďme hrdí na to, že jsme malý národ. 
velký národ je zoufalý národ prostě. Ale tady se říká, vy jste jenom malý národ, vy nic neznamenáte, vy se musíte přizpůsobit a tak dále. Jo. Hmm. Zapomenutí. Myslím, že se tady stává to zapomenutí. And who say you are nothing? Tradition. Tradition. Right. Mental tradition, program. Yeah. And history. Yeah. Protože naše historie je historie složitá, protože tady jsou velmi silné srdce, velmi silní bojovníci a pořád se jim říká, neumíte bojovat, umíte jenom prohrávat. I want to understand it. Because I came in 2012 and I started to teach here in Prague at the same time in Budapest, Bratislava and Prague. And Prague was very important for me. I worked here for two years and then the organization was not strong enough. But in Bratislava it was. So I'm centered in Bratislava, Berlo Lakovo, outside Bratislava. I came to teach methodical empathy. Mm -hmm. We created a way to teach empathy. We are coming from Škola Empathy. There is one school in Europe called Škola Empathy <laughs> in Slovakia. I had passion for Central Europe. And when I came here, I had a powerful group of Czech people. And one of my students was half Russian, half Czech, Olga. And she helped me to come here. And once we were sitting together, and I, I know Russian too, my grandmother, Russian from Odessa, mm -hmm. my grandfather from Uman, <laughs> I'm Ukrainian, oh. um, <clears throat> but they spoke Russian at home. And my father from Bulgaria, they spoke Bulgarian there and Spanish. A fantastic Ladino, mix. Ladino, very mix, <laughs> but they taught me only Hebrew. I asked Olga, what is the difference between Czech people and Russian people? You mm. know both, yeah? She said, Russian people are proud of being Russian. Yes. Czech people are not proud of being Czech. And I was shocked. And so I would like to understand it, because even though I'm not teaching now in Czech Republic, I'm not finished with Czech. Just waiting in the right constellation. Mm -hmm. Not because the Czech need me, I need them. I hope I can make a contribution. I feel I need to stand at least with one leg in Czech Republic. And then men from the group said to me, we will show you why. Lubosch and, and Marek. And they took me to parachutist pub next to um, Orthodox church where the two parachutists were caught. Oh, no. And oh, no, they no. taught me the whole story minute by minute by yes, minute. Yes. And basically what they were saying to me is our fathers were broken because they did not fight. Anu. And they were third generation. And Marek, what is Marek was, anyway, uh, come back. He said, I was born after the war, but my grandfather was broken and I am still broken because of that. Yes. So I'm, I'm putting it to you as a question. What's happening with the Czech trauma? <coughs> to je, to se vracíme se zpátky k té otázce, kterou jsem řekl na začátku, tý, toho těžiště, hmm. protože ten osud toho národa, nebo to není národ, já si myslím, že to je spíš duchovní stav, je v tom zaujmout to těžiště. A dokud se obrací kamkoliv o pomoc, o podporu, tak bude zrazen a zradí ho jeho vlastní síla. Protože on se nemá kam co obracet. On se má obracet k sobě a do sebe. Tell me about the center. Těžiště je průnik všech energií. Když se podíváte na kříž, tak on má nějaký směry a má jich víc. Když se podíváme na kouly, ona má mnoho směrů, nekonečné množství směrů a všechny se zbíhají v jednom jediném bodě. Indové by řekli Puruša. To by řekli. 
Jung by řekl self. Někdo jiný by řekl podstata. To je, to je, to je centrum, to je, to je těžiště. OK. I have a little question for you. Tell me something about the mission of the center for humanity. Když člověk přichází na svět, tak on přichází z té podstaty a na ní zapomíná. A svět ho od té podstaty pořád odvádí dál a dál a dál. Ale vlastně děje se to proto, aby si právě vzpomněl. Aby si vzpomněl, kdo je. Aby si vzpomněl, jaký je jeho původ, jaká je jeho podstata. A když si na to vzpomene a spojí se s tím těžištěm, takže je život, který je obyčejný, ale má sílu. A když, budeme, když umíme žít teď a tady ve spojení se svojí podstatou, tak už nemusíme nic hledat. To stačí. Is it fulfilled already? To je otázka, na kterou neexistuje odpověď. Protože co jí klade mysl? To je otázka, kterou klade mysl. Ale to, to naplnění, v momentě, kdy je to naplněno, ta otázka neexistuje. Do you have relationship to Friedrich Nietzsche? <coughs> a je, na, znám, znám ho, i jsem ho trochu studoval. A zdá se mi, že to je opravdu silný orel, který opravdu vylétl velmi vysoko a spadl velmi hluboko. <laughs> I took him seriously in my youth. Make very strong impression on me. Uh, I'm not a follower of Nietzsche. I'm not a follower of anybody. I believe the time for following is over. I don't think we need following anymore. But he reminded me of something. And it's reality for me. Das Ubermensch. Not national, not racist, not ethnic, not blood. That's a distortion of Nietzsche. Hitler used Nietzsche. He used Wagner, he used Beethoven, he used everything. Mm -hmm. But he's abused all of them. Hitler is not Germany. I know Germany. Hitler is a sickness of Germany, not Germany. Das Ubermensch is individual. That's a reality for me. I am still on my way to my own Ubermensch Yehuda. Jo, to je, to je, tomu naprosto rozumím, ale myslím, že právě Nietzsche tím svým osudem ukázal i to, kde jsou ty potíže. A ona je to veliká potíž. Pracuješ jako psychoterapeut, tak to víš, když člověk zažívá takzvanou inflaci, tak to znamená, že dostal veliké, velikou energii a on může letět kamkoliv, ale vždycky dost nemusí tvrdě přistát, když umí lítat. Ale lidi se teprve učí žít tyhle ty věci a právě proto je tak důležitá, důležitý to těžiště, Protože já jsem třeba prošel v kri krizí velikou a myslím, že někdo by ji diagnostikoval jako schizofrenii, ale já jsem se právě naučil být v tom těžišti, oko uragánu a nechat všechno projít. A Nietzsche je pro mě jeden z prvních, který vážným způsobem realizoval tu vizi a taky ukázal otevřený dveře, ale zároveň ty potíže. He became crazy. Ano. Early Nietzsche different from late Nietzsche. Ano. Early Nietzsche Zaratustra. Thus spoke Zaratustra. That's my Nietzsche. Late Nietzsche a little bit um, not well. And then he was in coma in the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, My real European heroes go earlier. Gottlieb Fichte, Hegel, Schelling, Goethe, mm -hmm. Schiller. This mm -hmm. is my Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's not Germanic. Germans were everywhere. There were Carpathian German in Slovakia and Sudeten Germans here and Volga German in Russia and uh, Transylvania German in, in Hungary and Romania. They were everywhere, like the Jews. 
yeah German one side Jews the other side that's Europe and now so these people not German European like Beethoven huh Arnum. Arnum. ich bin eine European yeah. Arnum. the German had a special task but they created the center consciously they created the philosophy of the center Fichte is the founder of the concept of das Ich. Didn't exist before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And philosophy and psychology were together. Yeah? Oh. But psychology started as a separate discipline and <clears throat> it went in different directions but one direction was neglected. The psychology of Central Europe was neglected. I don't, I don't. Jung came later. First came Franz Brentano. Franz Brentano? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The psychology of the eye. Fichte was philosophy of the eye. Brentano was the psychology of the eye. Mm -hmm. Intentionality. I am not coming from body. I work through body. Mm -hmm. I has its own source. That's Brentano. But this was neglected. Freud took over. I product of id. Now the ego. That's very different. But at least Freud put psyche on the table. Yeah? And we have to go deep. That's cool. But the psychology of the origin of the human individual spirit still neglected. Mm -hmm. no, no. There is no psychology without philosophy. Uh, consciously or not consciously? Just You're a psychotherapist. Tell me something about your model. Ontology of human being. Já myslím, že klíč je hranice mezi vědomím a nevědomím. A jsem přesvědčený, že bytost původně, původně je kompletně v tom, čemu říkáme nevědomí, to znamená božství. Ale v tu chvíli, v, ten, v tom stavu, je sice plně existující, ale, ale nereflektovaně. A proto potřebuje světlo vědomí, proto potřebuje reflexy. A proto vstupuje do světa hmoty, který vlastně paradoxně ještě vící zatlačí do toho spánku. A jak potom postupuje vlastně hlouběji a hlouběji v tom zapomnění, tak se zažehne ta původní jiskra toho božství a může se stát vědomou. Člověk se říká se tomu aha moment, aha, aha, já existuju, já jsem, já vnímám, já cítím, já vidím, já slyším. A následuje proces. Proces úžasu, úděsu, útěku, útoku. Mnoho, mnoho různých reakcí na, na, ten, na, na ten zážitek, na, ten, na, ten, na tu situaci. A tak se člověk vlastně dostává znovu sám k sobě. Ale jak vlastně ty si taky řekl, když se dostává k sobě, tak už se dostane k sobě ne jako dítě, ale jako dospělý, partnerský, jako dospělá partnerská bytost. A v tom, v tom vidím tu misi. To je pro mě ta mise. When a child grows to adulthood, there is adulthood waiting to happen. They become adults. They don't become giraffes. They become adult human, yeah? So the potential of adult men, adult woman is waiting for them. Pre-existing as potential. The aha moment you talk about Result of conscious and unconscious or pre-existing waiting to be discovered? Tohle, to vůbec není jednoduchá otázka. <laughs> I don't ask easy questions. Ale, ale myslím, že je možný ji nějakým způsobem ochopit. V každém případě, dokud jsme tady, to znamená, dokud je člověk svým světelným potenciálem zatemňovaný, filtrovaný tělem, f f hmotou, fyzis, tak by neměl 
uh, sahat ke konečným soudům. <laughs> Ale určitě by měl hledat a nacházet nějaký, nějaký modely nebo koncepty své existence. To dokonce musí, protože jinak by propadl chaosu. Takže jsem přesvědčený, že tady někde je vědomí, tady je někde nevědomí, mezi nimi je most a, a proudí čilá konverzace. I want to challenge you. You speak as if it's two, conscious and unconscious. But as I'm listening to you, I realize that really you speak about three. And you put them in a box of two. You speak about conscious and unconscious. But actually, these conscious, unconscious and superconscious. To je zase, jo, jsme tady u té otázky. Je, jestliže, jestliže tady je vědomí, tady je nevědomí a mezi nimi opravdu proudí komunikace, je tam spojení, tak se aktivuje vyšší stav vědomí. Možná, že já mu říkám pro sebe univerzum, možná, že vy říkáte supervědomí. A pro mě univerzum znamená spojení všech verzí. Jo? Člověk žije nějakou verzi. Každý člověk žije nějakou verzi. A univerzum je ten stav, tak, tak, tak vysoký vědomí, že spojuje všechny, všechny jednotlivé verze. Univerzum. A končí dualita. A tím končí dualita. So the universe is number three. And it is present all the time. Conscious, unconscious, superconscious, waiting. But what you present is practical. Because there's two options about the cosmic. Believing in it or discovering it. Yes. And I can see you are a phenomenologist. Mm -hmm. Spirit, not to believe, but to discover. But you can discover gold in the mountain if there is gold in the mountain. The discovery doesn't create the gold. A super consciousness exists. But you can choose to believe it or to process it. So I'm completely with you that the activity between conscious and unconscious manifests superconscious. But the cosmos is waiting to be discovered. Columbus did not create America. He discovered it. Ano. It was there. <laughs> the spirit is there. Yeah. I could see that you're Jungian. You work with Jung, yeah? I came to a limit with Jung. I think Jung stopped somewhere to be safe. He was playing safe. There's a risk he didn't take. It's a challenge. Not many people can answer it, but I think maybe you can. There is a threshold Jung did not cross. And that limited my interest in him because it was half Europe. I don't know, is Switzerland Europe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> um, all philosophers since Immanuel Kant had a ceiling. The truth we cannot know. And Jung could choose to stay Kantian or to move on. If you move out of beyond Kant, mm -hmm. there is a danger. Mm -hmm. They call you a mystic. Jung did not want to be a mystic. But He stopped. So for him, from what I understand, there was conscious and unconscious. No, ono je, ono je to těžký, že jo, protože on je syn svoje svý doby, primárně. Jo, jako, ale vím, že jednou on řekl, on řekl takovou zvláštní větu v nějakém rozhovoru, že na východ od Krušných hor už žije jenom ruský mužik. Jung said that. Yes, yes. And maybe in next life must born like a woman in a Czech Republic. <laughs> Ale já jsem chtěl říct ještě jednu důležitou věc. Já s tím vlastně dost souhlasím, co, co říká Jehuda. Já si myslím, že on se zastavil na fenomenu anima. Že to je tam on, tam, on tam se nedostal dál, on vlastně jako, je to, je to ten moment, kdy existuje že jo, vě, věda, existuje umění a vlastně on, on jasně, že aspiroval na to, že překročí někam do úrovně umění, ale on tam jako nevkročil, on se tam vlastně neodvážil, protože by musel 
mm. se víc odevzdat animě. Then we have to look Aristotle. Because anima is Aristotelian term. And Aristotle took the perspective, the Platonian perspective, and applied it to nature, to the details of nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the application of spirit into details, he called it anima. The first psychological book is De Anima by Aristotle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And anima for Aristotle means dusha, the soul. He did not need animus. Anima was enough for him. Mm -hmm. So for Aristotle, anima was dusha, but there was still duch. Plato spoke about duch, mm -hmm. and Aristotle spoke about anima, but they could see it's a bigger picture. So to stop in anima, is to stop two-thirds for the complete structure. Oh, no. oh, because Aristotle did not doubt the spiritual origin. If he would, they would kill him, like they killed Socrates. Yeah. He ran away from Athens before they killed him anyway. He said, he said, I'm leaving Athens so I don't allow Athens to commit the second crime against philosophy. So he ran away. Yes, I know. But um, anima was not everything. Like, dusha is not everything, it is duch, not just mm -hmm. a word. Mm -hmm. So Jung stopped there, but I think he took it one step further into collective unconscious. And I want to ask you for your advice about, at the time of German idealism, Hegel mainly, yeah? who was the Czech or Czechoslovak? idealistic philosophers. I miss them. Mm -hmm. No to ani, bych řekl popravdě, ani nevím, protože tady vlastně nebylo, kdo ví, jaký vzdělání v tomhletom smyslu. Možná, že nejvíc by se tomu blížil Masaryk, ale to ani není, myslím, úplně stejná doba. A pak bych řekl, že byly velmi zajímavý ty meziválečný mystikové. Tady myslím, že se hodně pěstoval mysticismus, to znamená vlastně Kafka, Jo, jako Meiring, jako ty, ty, ty just, just a moment. Masaryk was political philosopher. Masaryk, Kafka, Kafka. Meiring. No, oni žili v Praze, jo. byli to Němci, byli to často vlastně to byli židovský Němci, ale prostě žili v Praze. Will to... you remember Meiring? I will. Okay. Tam, tam bych řekl, že byla nejsilnější tato, tato, tato vlastně enkláva. No. Mm -hmm. Pak byl nesmírně zajímavý Pierre Lasenic. Mm -hmm. okay. Tahle škola tady byla silná, no. I want to enter it more deeply. I have English limitation, but I have a sense of it. Because, of course, Kafka, the Jews say he's a Jewish writer, the Germans say he's a German writer, and the Czech say he's a Czech writer. And that's, for me, is Europe. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking for more of that. But he, Kafka, was in a nightmare. He never got out, and and uh, just to be awake meant to be in a nightmare. I know, a bit neurotic. And he was awake when people were asleep, sure. and then the nightmare came. He could see it coming. He had no solutions. He just experienced the nightmare. I know, I know. Well, to be neurotic was just to be realistic. I know. You know, there was a, a, a politician in America in the time of uh, Jimmy Carter, and, and he was his advisor for national security. And he was a Polish man, Zbigniew Brzezinski. Ah, Minister Zahraniczy, jo. No, no, he was advisor for national security. Very important in America. Ja się to yeah. man, się Between president and Pentagon. But advisor, he's in the White House. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And after two years in the White House, Zbigniew Brzezinski said, um, anyone here who is not schizophrenic just doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> If you are informed, you have uh -huh. to be schizophrenic here. Mm -hmm. So that was realism 
i schizofrenia. And for Katka, realism was neurosis. Yeah. To byla ne... Ano. Yeah. Já mám vždycky představu, vlastně když se ptá na, na tady to, to období, že bych si představoval takový film z té doby. Jak je staroměstský náměstí, s šest nebo sedm hodin ráno, a tam je člověk, takový tlouštík, který klečí u kanálu a zvrací do toho kanálu. A kolem něj prochází subtilní, dobře oblečený muž a soucitně na něj pohlíží. A to je minutí dvou géniů. Tohle je Jaroslav Hašek a tohle je Franz Kafka. A Kafka jde do yeah. pojišťovny yeah. a Hašek se vrací domů. <laughs> And really, he should write in Czech, Kafka. But he hated his father. And his father was Czech nationalist. Mm. Jewish, but Czech nationalist. Mm -hmm. And a rebellion against his father, he wrote in German. <laughs> ano, ano. Ale jinak Kafka, to je zajímavý, on poslední rok svého života vlastně utekl i té neuroze. On vlastně se přestěhoval do, do Berlína a začal vydávat literaturu. Jo. Bylo to takový heroický gesto, ale prostě poslední rok svého života neprožil pod nadvládou té neurozy. A žil se ženou. Kafka. Mm -hmm. Last year, Last year. Of, of, of life. And that killed him. Hmm. <laughs> On potom umřel vlastně na, na souchotě, že jo? Nearly all his writing died when the Nazis came down to Prague. Hmm. Max Brod took all his writing and ran away to the south and saved it. Nearly hmm. was all destroyed. Mm -hmm. Kafka was a witness of the nightmare of Europe. What is a counterpart? Who is antiteza for Kafka of that time? The light of Europe, who? Já si myslím, že to je právě ten Hašek. Oni oba se vlastně potýkají s tou chorobou, každý jinak. Tam se něco zdravého vlastně najít nedalo. Švejk? Švejk. Švejk. It's a big message. Yeah, yeah, I remember Švejk very well. Very popular in Israel, Švejk. Yeah. Yeah. No antiteza? No idealism? Apart from Masaryk? Těžko říct, já si myslím, že opravdu tady bylo mnohem blíž, než jako k čisté filozofii, tak měli lidi blíž k mystice. Protože oni, když zůstali vlastně jako filozofičtí, tak se spíš odtrhli od reality, jo? zůstali v nějakým akademistickým uzavření a to vlastně není zajímavý. So what mysticism was popular here in the First Republic? No typicky právě kafkovský, meiringovský, to znamená vlastně jako mystika, která se hodně obracela jako k tarotu, k historii evropské duchovnosti, Egypt samozřejmě. Ale teď mě ještě napadnul, nevím, jestli se tam dá zařadit, ale nesmírně silný filozof tady byl Patočka. Jo, to je, on spíš samozřejmě vrcholil po druhé světové válce, že jo, ale jako tam někde začínal. Jo. A tady byl samozřejmě Drtikol, že jo, to byl prostě. Byla Figura par excellence. I will study it. But with what I know, I have many questions. Um, there was a, a spirit here in the First Republic. Uh, Slovakia free from Hungary and Czech is free from oh, Habsburgs. Oh. And there was something sane here in crazy Europe. Then it was destroyed. And then there was some spirit in 1968, spring of Prague. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I was reading newspapers already then, I remember. Then it was destroyed with the tanks, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now this freedom, okay? No fascism, no communism. Where is the spirit? <laughs> uh. Já mám kamaráda a on emigroval jednou do Ameriky, ještě za komunistů. A když se vrátil, tak mi řekl, v Americe peníze dokázali to, co se tady nepodařilo komunistům. Protože komunisti se obraceli na nějakou ideu, že jo? Oni, oni bojovali ve smyslu jako ideologickým, zatímco peníze bojují přímo 
na vůli člověka. Is America free? No. So here's a common denominator between capitalism and communism. Not so different. Same philosophy, religious philosophy, yeah. different styles. Materialism. Katastrofa. To je katastrofa. You think materialism is catastrophe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. To je to je nejhlouběji, kam může člověk klesnout. And from this point of view, Marx and Henry Ford the same thing. A to, Historic materialism, capitalistic materialism, it's not so different. A to si představ, že existuje, mě to vyprávěl někdo, nevím, jestli to muzeum je v Lipsku, nebo kdy, odkud, je, odkud je Marx, že v tom muzeu existuje smlouva, kterou Marx podepsal krví, vlastní krví, s dňáblem, aby jeho filozofie hmm. vydržela co nejdýl. Yes, the This... devil is a resident of Leipzig. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah. A to je, to je fenomen. Mm. To je fenomen psych yeah. pro psychoterapii. Yeah. Yes, you know the devil performed in Leipzig before when <laughs> uh, Martin Luther tried to translate the Bible into into German. Mm -hmm. The devil tried to stop him. Oh, no. And the devil was he knew the Bible by heart. So Martin said the devil is a theologian. <laughs> and he was making him crazy. At some point, Martin Luther took the ink and threw it to the devil, but the devil moved, so it's still on the wall. <laughs> and so he got marks. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Historic materialism. So this is an impulse of hatred. Materialism is an impulse of hatred. Mm -hmm. Dominant. More dominant than Catholic Church. That's the enemy of the spirit of Europe. This is a big crime against humanity, materialism. Pierre, do, we, do you believe there is enough power here to go beyond materialism culturally in a big way? Určitě. Ur, určitě. A na tom je dobrá jedna věc. Ten, ten konzumní systém už se stal tak obludným, a nelidským, že sám už se hroutí. On, on vlastně už je, on už vlastně skončil v tuhle chvíli. But collapse is not enough. We need to create something else. Are people working here towards the next culture beyond materialism? Without ano. going back to the church? No, no, jasně, jasně. You have colleagues for this here? Tady máme takovou terapeutickou stráň. <laughs> If there are people here working for this, I'm coming to Prague. Because I wasn't sure, I'm comfortable in Slovakia. Ne, musíme to spojit, musíme spojit Čechy a Slováky zase znovu. Ty lidi zůstali spojený, ty lidi nikdo nerozdělil. I am a Czechoslovak patriot. <laughs> Maybe the last one, but I am. I cannot say I'm Slovak, I come from outside. I cannot say I'm Czech, but I can say I'm Czechoslovak. We must be a human being. Yeah. I want to tell you the story about the cross of Europe. It's a vision, not for me. I'm still not fully understanding it. You know the Apocalypse of St. John? I know. In the Apocalypse of St. John, there is a vision of the future Cholovyak. Um, head above the cloud in mm -hmm. the sun, chest rainbow, feet on fire. Mm -hmm. That's future man. And so someone projected it on Europe mm -hmm. in two ways. One way. Ural and east of Ural is head above the clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, Eastern Europe. Oh, no. Not here. East of Dnieper. Okay? West. Do, 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 fire. Mm -hmm. Center the rainbow. That's one picture. Mm -hmm. East, west. But then there's also north, south. North of Carpathia, the Czech people. Head above the clouds. <laughs> Not completely here, but in the sun, potentially. Slovak, rainbow. Rainbow. Mm -hmm. In the center. Not completely in the head, but in the rainbow. Madiar, feet on fire. Paprika. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 
it meets in the center, Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's future then. So he said, Czech, Slovak and Madiars should work together so that eventually East, West and Center will work together. That's a picture. To je moc krásný. Já mám big beatovou kapelu a ta se jmenuje Rakouskou Hersko. Austrian Hungarian. Mm -hmm. There was something good in Austria Hungary. Samozřejmě. Of course. You know, there was an argument for a long time in Frankfurt about unification of Germany. Middle of 19th century. And there were two versions. Große Deutschland und Kleine Deutschland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Große Deutschland include Österreich, Germans, but millions of Slavs. Mm. That's Slovaks, Poles, Czech, Ukrainian. So this was all Galicia. This was all. Uh, mm -hmm. So Große Deutschland includes Slavonic people. Um, Franz Josef did not say my nation, he said my nations. Oh, no. oh, no. Kleine Deutschland, north of the Main, river Main, pure Deutsch. Mm -hmm. And they talked and they talked and they talked and they came to no conclusion. And then Bismarck said, forget it. Kleine Deutschland, north of Main, Prussian, that's it. So mm. that was a destruction of Österreich. Kleine Deutsche, no Österreich. Yes, no. And then 1866, <laughs> destroyed them. Kenny Gartz. So this was a vision of Central Europe. And EU took model from Franz Josef without monarchy. I think it is in the right direction, United Europe, yeah? And I don't want to go political, but one you were talking before, I had one nightmare, déjà vu, between 1918 and 1938, First Republic, Czechoslovakia, no support, Hello. no treaty, nobody committed to Czechoslovakia. Hello. Maybe Woodrow Wilson, that's it, but he is over there and he's useless. So England not committed to it, France not committed to it, Russia, nobody. So Czechoslovakia alone. Same with Ukraine. Ukraine is alone. Hmm. And unification of East Ukraine and West Ukraine was a little bit like Slovakia and Czech. More Ruski in the East, more European in the West, but they wanted to be one country. Hmm. Nobody is committed to Ukraine. Ukraine in the same position as Czechoslovakia. And Hitler is not coming from the East. That's the difference. That's a terrible picture. What do you think? No, já jediný, co si o to myslím, je, že je dobře, že to celý končí, jo. Protože tehdy Československo zůstalo samotný i z toho důvodu, že bylo vlastně obchodním konkurentem Západu. Oni nechtěli spolupracovat, oni pro ně my jsme byli konkurence. Yeah, Czechoslovakia was strong, hey, Škoda was strong. Hodně, hodně silný, no. A vlastně teď, je, hmm. teď si myslím, že ta doba je zase ještě posunutá v tom, že se to celý opravdu už, ten starý model už je prostě neudržitelný. Ten starý model pořád se snaží, snaží upoutat naší pozornost ke starým příběhům. Of course, back to 19th century. <coughs> Putin is back to 19th century. Přesně. Ale my, my potřebujeme, pokud mm. chceme si otevřít opravdu cestu, tak už mm. nevěnovat pozornost starým příběhům, mm. ale soustředit se skutečně na to, o čem tady mluvíme. Mm. To znamená na to, na to lidský, na to těžiště, na, to, na, tu, na spolupráci, na, na partnerství. Mm. Ale jako, ne jako na teze, ale jako na reálnou věc. How? No how. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> kdo, se ptá, kdo se ptá jak, tak váhá. Kdo se ptá jak, tak čeká. I'm not waiting. I do what I can. Um, 
yesterday we had a very special meeting, our colleagues and friends in Prague, and also from Trutnov and also from Olomot. And the question I put on the table is, shall we, Schola Empathy, start again in Prague? Open question. Mm -hmm. No ambition. We are busy in Slovakia, but I feel not complete picture. So we went around the table and people said, what is special contribution of our work to check and to the future. So mm -hmm. very interesting answers came. Um, what did Martin say? Spirit of Central Europe. He said, what we do, help the spirit of Central Europe. Mm -hmm. um, what did, tell, remind me? Barra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Barra said, this work, methodical empathy, methodically, not waiting until we feel okay, but doing it. Mm -hmm. Create a deeper change in people's relationship. Same oh. people in the same marriage go deeper. Um, what did Sia say? She said we have to experience it. She said they have to experience it because she said in the beginning I wasn't sure, but when mm -hmm. I could see it, it's more me. It's a young woman. Um, what did uh, what did Jiri say? Yiri Sey from Trutnov, he's a colleague, a graduate, he said the I must be in the center of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was another Yiri, yeah? boyfriend of Lucia. And he didn't say much, but at the end I said to him, Why? Here. Yeah. And he said very shortly, and he spoke from here, not because of me or because of some. he really spoke from here. And he said, empathy is the future. Now. Exactly. And I felt this is a Czech man speaking. Really from here. And I said, that's not from books, is it? I said, no. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lucia, his girlfriend, said he was always speaking like that. <laughs> so uh, th that is what I do. That we don't have to wait for empathy to happen. But it's initiation. It's like know, making a garden. Know. You know, it doesn't happen by time. So they encourage me. And meeting you encourage me. If you tell me there is a strong movement to go beyond materialism here, that remind me why I'm here. Maybe a little contribution. Doesn't matter how big. Seed, yeah. Wow. A mali krok a krok. That's all you can do. <laughs> yeah, I miss Czech Republic. I miss Czech people. They're different from Slovak. Když sem Němci přijedou, a jsem to pozoroval vlastně celý život. Když Němec překročí hranice, tak upadne do tranzu. Proč? Protože ta atmosféra je jiná. Ta atmosféra je jiná. Tady jsou lidi, kteří ho vnímají, oni ho cítí, oni, oni ho vidí. I can see that. I can see that. In, in 1919, During Versailles conference, people could meet again from Germany and, and England and France and Russia. There was a conference in Switzerland near Basel. And people came from all these countries. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Benesch was kicking all the Germans out of Czechoslovakia and out of Poland, 11 million Germans kicked into Deutschland. Some Nazis, not all of them, okay. But in 1919, Rudolf Steiner could see it coming. And he said to them, Deutschland cannot fulfill its destiny anymore. He said, Deutschland cannot fulfill its mission anymore. Before Hitler, because 
Deutschland cannot be itself without the Western Slavs. Mm. A night is broken. Who will replace Germany? And I know they need the Slavonic people. I think Germany is lost, broken. I worked for a few years in Germany, in Hamburg, and the third, fourth generation, trans-generation trauma, still broken. Yes, no. You can see it now. Schultz, uh, I will help Ukraine a little bit, you know, still afraid. Stand for ale tam musí dojít k zásadní proměně, nevím, jestli k ní dojde, ale může se to stát jedině tím, že důvod k tomu setkávání nebude ekonomický, ale bude lidský. Bude to výměna zkušeností, bude to výměna poznání. Ne, ne to, že oni budou přemýšlet o tom, jak využít slovanskou prostě blbost. No. Well, um, Europe fell asleep. Why Europe? And Putin woke it up. Thanks, Putin. Mm -hmm. Vladimir Vladimirovich waking Europe up. Merved, Merved, zase jednou žve. Bear is, <laughs> bear is screaming. Bear is cutting itself. I think Ukraine will survive. But I don't know if Russia will survive. To je otázka, no, ale já se myslím ani, já se musím přiznat, že mě to, já se o tohle jako nezajímám, jo, protože mě to patří do těch starých příběhů. Ono, každá válka vždycky odnese něco, co už je fakt nemocný a opravdu třeba i mrtvý. Prostě takhle to bohužel je, jo. Ale mě spíš zajímá ta otázka, jestli lidi budou vůbec kdy schopní přestat spolu prostě válčit jo? a normálně se setkávat prostě v míru, v pohodě, ve výměně věcí, ve výměně zkušeností, v tom, co, co, co může dát člověk jinému jin, lepšího než svoji zkušenost. But it's happening, yeah. It started, it started. And then the peace was destroyed. So we need peace first. Ano. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pierre, if we will bring school of methodical empathy to Czech Republic, will you welcome us? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'd like a welcome from people like you. I will never leave Slovakia, but I feel I am in Czechoslovakia. And I feel now, after these 24 hours, <laughs> and we have another meeting later about it, that something is not finished, complete, for my little contribution no, no, no. without Czech Republic. That's how I feel. Tak když ty si, když miluješ historii, tak znáš historii, mm. tak víš, co je Praha a víš, co jsou Čechy a náš vztah se, Sloven se Slovenskem. Tell me more about it. Já si myslím, že podstatou toho vztahu je láska, kde Češi zastupují element, který by se dal označit jako mužský, a Slováci element, který je jakoby ženský, jangový a jinový, a dokonce jakoby se tam potkává východ a západ. Takže když se spojují Češi a Slováci, tak se vlastně v tom centru, v tom těžišti spojují tyhle ty elementy. So Thomas Masaryk dream was real. Ano, ano. Not just, yeah. Taky první republika bylo velmi vzácné místo, kde se opravdu setkávaly národy. Kde And you think it can come back culturally? Ono to nikdy neumřelo, nikdy to úplně neumřelo. Je to jenom to jako oheň, který, který je hodně jako hluboko, ale pořád hoří. We have one example of it. Roman. And what is his surname? Um, he is my student and our colleague. And he is an actor, mm -hmm. brilliant, um, independent. A one man actor, yeah? And he is working in Czech and in Slovakia all the time. Yeah. So he is on the cultural front. Yeah. That's good. Um, Pierre, that's really helpful for me. Já jsem taky moc rád, že jsme se mohli setkat. I'm very glad.